Praise the Lord. We're pr proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pray for the hearers to uh, have soft hearts to receive the word of God. Pray for the backsliders to be convicted and have a fear of God to do the will of the Father. Praise his holy name. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May the Lord's name be magnified today in San Clemente. May his word go forth boldly. Praise the Lord. In Psalms it says, Your word I've hidden it in my heart that I might not sin against you. So the, the word is to put, put the word of God, put the love of God in your heart that you would have, that you would magnify God and you would magnify, my, magnify his son Jesus Christ that people can be saved through the preaching of the gospel. Jesus said, I send you out to preach the gospel to all creatures in Mark 16, 15. So that's what his disciples are called to do, to go out to the highways and byways in Luke 14 and to compel people to come into the kingdom of God. And it says in the latter times, God has manifested his, his, the mystery of God through the preaching. In 1 Corinthians 1, it says the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to we who are being saved, it's the power of God. So we come out here that you would understand the power of God and that you would walk as, as Jesus walked. And we're giving you the words that a lot of the churches aren't, aren't giving you. Uh, the warnings that Jesus gave, Jesus warned about hell 42 times. And so it must be godly, it must be loving to warn, just like Jesus warned. Praise the Lord. You can go to heaven if you believe. You can go to heaven if you believe, my friend. No, it's an unrighteous judgment. No, don't hit him, don't hit him. Yep. We pray that he would have, God would have mercy. Pray God would have mercy on you, my friend. Jesus came and died for you. It says that Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. And we're supposed to walk as Jesus walked. And we're supposed to pray for mercy on those who are unbelievers. We're supposed to pray for all men that they could be saved. Because God's, God's will is that not one would perish, but that all men would come to repentance. And so we come out here to proclaim that you can have repentance today, my friend. You can be saved today by the blood of Jesus. The Bible says you must believe that he is God. That he came. It says that he came to save the world from this from sins. The Old Testament prophesied about Jesus. In Isaiah 7, 14, it said that there would be one born of a virgin, and that's Jesus Christ. In Micah 5, 2, that he would be born in Bethlehem. In Isaiah 40, verse 3, that there'd be one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. And that was John the Baptist, and that was all prophesied 700 years before Jesus came and fulfilled it. In Psalm 22, that not one bone would be broken. And that they would that that they would cast lots for his clothes. All this prophesies of, of this mystery of God in Ephesians. It said that the mystery of God has been revealed through the prophets, and that we see it now. And then Jesus came and he gave you the words of life. In John 6, Jesus said that his words are spirit and everlasting life. His word is a quickening spirit. And so this is a call to the churches that are falling away, that are that are not following God. And they're, they're turning away from the truth. This is a call for them to hear the word of the Lord and turn back and do the will of the Father. And we can see that we're in last days where, where Jesus said that there'd be many false prophets and that there'd be many false Christ, meaning false anointed, and that, that even the elect would be fooled if that were possible. And so we're coming out here to, to preach the words of Christ, that you could be saved, but you've got to turn from sin. In the Old Testament, it says... Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and our God will abundantly pardon him. So you got to turn to the Lord and you got to forsake the wicked ways that you're on. And you got to even forsake your thoughts and have the mind of Christ. Paul says that the spiritual man judges all things, but he himself is rightly judged by no man. But because we have the mind of Christ... So it's the word of God that, that judges all things. Jesus said in John, I think it's John 8, that the, that the words that people reject are the same words that are going to judge them on judgment day. And so everybody loves John 3.16, and everybody's heard that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe in him shall have everlasting life. 
God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Now here's where a lot of the churches don't tell you. They, it tells you after that, that he who does not believe in the son is condemned already. So if you don't believe in Jesus, you're walking already in darkness. You're walking in the ways of this world. Jesus said in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through the Son. That means your, your Buddha statues, that means your Hare Krishna, that means every other way is a false way, and Jesus said every other way is a thief and a robber. The only way is through the Son, Jesus Christ, because God laid down glory. It says in the Old Testament that, that he is God with us, Emmanuel. That's Jesus, God with us. He laid down glory to come here. And, and he came as a, as a suffering servant. It says in the Old Testament that he would, that he would uh, come and give himself as a ransom for many. In Isaiah 53, 700 years beforehand, that he would be wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace would be laid upon him. By his stripes, we can be healed. And that he was stricken. It, it, it appeared that he was stricken of God. And so people saw that, and, 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 and when he rose from the grave, the disciples understood that Jesus had already told them up to two or three times that he would lay down his life, and that he would raise it on the third day. And Mary Magdalene, who had had demons cast out of her, she heard, she heard the Lord, and she, she knew that he was going to his crucifixion, and she was one of the first witnesses there looking for Jesus, and Jesus revealed himself to her. And, and, and he revealed himself to her first. And so those who have been forgiven much love much. And Jesus can heal you from your, from your addictions. Jesus can heal you from depression and from anxiety. Jesus' arm is not too short, but it's your sins that have separated you from God, the Bible says. It's sin that separates you from God. And this world, it's going after every other thing to fix their anxiety, to fix their, to fix their, themselves with psychologies. Praise God. And Jesus says he can do it for you. Jesus can deliver you. That's what we're here to tell you is by the power of God, we have been delivered from one dark kingdom into his glorious light. We have been delivered from some from new age, some from drug addictions, a drug dealing, a drunkenness, fornication, all of these things, the, the nightlife, the, the worldly things. We were once all alienated in darkness, the Bible says. We were all dead in our trespasses, Ephesians 2 says. And then we were made alive by him. He quickened us by his spirit. Like he said in John 6, 6, 3, that his word is everlasting life and it is spirit. So that is what it is to be quickened. The word of God should quicken you if you're a believer. You should see the faith of the saints out there. You should t test to see if the word is being preached and if it's quickening you. And, and Jesus came preaching to the church. Jesus came talking about hypocrites in the church. He said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Teaching the doctrines and precepts of men, they worship me in vain in Matthew 15. And so Jesus came rebuking fake believers. His ministry was to the Jews first. And it was prophesied in the Old Testament that, they, that it would go be sent forth to the Gentiles because Abraham believed that God could raise Isaac up from the dead and he believed by faith and we are the children of Abraham and Jesus said that he could that he can make the stones turn into ch sons of Abraham that God can do that and in John John 8 31 Jesus says that the servant of sin is a slave of sin and so being a believer you're no longer dead in your sins you're no longer a slave of sin he says the servant of sin is a slave of sin but whom the sun sets free is free indeed praise god and these people he was preaching to were religious and they said we've never been slaves of sin we're children of abraham and jesus described what a slave of sin is it's a servant of sin you become a slave to it you have no control over yourself. Ask anybody who's been delivered from addictions, from drunkenness, from this world, and they will have a testimony. They will have a testimony of God's power in their life to deliver them from that and to give them the Holy Spirit. In Acts 5.32, it says the Holy Spirit is given to those who obey. Are you obeying the Word of God today? Is the Word of God in you? Is Christ in you? Is He being formed, fully formed in you, like the Bible says? Yes, is he fully formed in you? Are you walking for Christ? Are you living for Christ? Are you dead to sin? The Bible says in Romans 6, who is crucified 
you, you, in baptism, you've crucified your flesh. You're now dead to this world. It's no longer you that lives, but Christ in you that lives. In Romans 8, it says there's therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So the proof that you're in Christ is that you walk in the spirit. You walk with Christ. He is your all in all. He is your Lord and Savior. And you are, if you're a disciple, you're going to preach his words. You are going to teach people the commandments of Jesus. Jesus said after he resurrected in Matthew 28, go and preach the word. Preach to all creatures. Preach the word. Teaching them everything that I've taught you. Baptizing them. And, and then teaching everything that I've taught you. The commandments of Jesus. And that's what a disciple is. He's a preacher of the gospel. He's an evangelist in some form or fashion. He is a, a workman, need not be ashamed because he rightly divides the word of truth and he feeds people the word of God. When Peter denied Jesus and, and Jesus prophesied that he would deny him when it came time for, for the crucifixion, Jesus says, but when thou art converted, meaning he had to get converted again, strengthen the brethren. And Peter wept much and many tears when he denied the Lord three times because in his flesh he said, I'll never deny you, Lord. I will go to the death with you. And many, many people today say the same thing. But, but are they able to do that? We count on the Lord for the power to do that. And when, when Peter denied him, he remembered what the Lord had told him and he wept bitter tears. And those were tears that, that, that rended his heart. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, it says, Godly sorrow worketh repentance, not to be repented of. It does something to your heart. It produces a zeal, it says in 2 Corinthians 7. It produces a purity, a purity. A purity, and it says what, what indignation your sin cause, causes. What indignation? So it's like you, you realize your sin caused, it causes something against the holy God, and you become indignant that you did it. And that's what real repentance is, not to be repented of. So repenting isn't just saying, I'm sorry, and doing the sign of the cross every day, while you keep going to the bars, while you keep going to the worldly concerts, while you speak while you speak as the world speaks and the world heareth you, do you know it says that if that the word that the word of God, if they don't hear it and understand it, that they are not of God, they are of the world, and the world heareth them. And so if you're a true believer, you love the word of God. It quickens you. You understand that it's coming straight from the scriptures. Like it says in Hebrews 4.12, that the word of God is quick and powerful, that it is sharper than a two-edged sword. It's piercing soul and spirit. It's divi dividing bones and marrow. It's a discerner of your heart and your thoughts. That's what the word of God does. So we read the word of God and it reads us and it shows us wherever we need to be conformed to the image of Christ, that we would walk as Christ walked. And so Jesus warned about fake believers. He came warning about fake believers. So that's the love of God, that he would make sure that we're not hypocrites. You know what he said the leaven of the Pharisees is? He said it's hypocrisy. And today we have many people who are claiming the name of Christ who still say they practice sin or they live in sin all the time and they just can't stop in their, in their flesh. That, that nobody can stop sinning. And that's what false teachers are described as in 2 Peter 2. It says they promise you liberty, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. With their eyes, they can't cease from sin. So Jesus said that if you continue in sin, you will not abide in his house forever. You will be cut off. So the sin of, of the leaven of the Pharisees, Jesus said, is hypocrisy. And so the power of God is supposed to give you a testimony. It says in 2 Timothy, Paul says... And then the sure foundation of God stands still and let every and he knows those who are his and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That means you leave sin. That means that if you're naming Christ, you're not walking in sin. And so Jesus told us about uh, the kingdom of God. And he said, verily, verily, unless a man is born again, he can't even see the kingdom of God. You have to be born again of the spirit and of the water. And it's not by the will of man. I can't tell you exactly how to be born again. Or it would be man being able to tell you what you have to do. It's the spirit of God that will bear witness 
when you are born again and he will he will prove that you're born again it says the spirit bears witness even in our prayers and it's the spirit that convicts us of what sin is and and, it, and he teaches us all things did you know that the both the bible says the holy spirit will lead us into all truth and you need you do not need a teacher so you if you are a disciple of god you're going to read the, the words of jesus and you're going to grow and and jesus said this he who abides in my words are my disciples indeed, and they will know the truth, and the truth will set them free. But whom the Son sets free is free indeed, but the slave will not abide in the house of the Lord forever. So if you're still in addiction, if you're still popping pills, if you're still getting drunk, if you're still in fornication, if you're still just going to church, but there's no change, that the Lord has not put his spirit in you to convict you to overcome and here's what Jesus said, that you can't even see the kingdom of God until you're born again. And then he tells you that the parables are given to his children to understand the kingdom of God, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And if you're born again, you're going to see what Jesus preached. And you're going to know when people are telling you things that don't line up with the word of God, like once saved, always saved, like pre-tribulation rapture, like, like keep the law of Moses. These things the Bible says the opposite of. Jesus says in Mark, uh, Matthew 13, that there are four ways that you can hear God's word. Four ways, my friends. And this was the verse that convicted me when I was a believer in quotes, but I live for the world. And the first, the first hearer of the kingdom of God hears it and does not receive it. He doesn't believe it. He's the atheist. He is the scientist that just rejects it. He's the guy who believes in evolution. He believes that Jesus can't be the only way. And he rejects it. He says, God would not make us follow Jesus. God is, there's no way. And so that person just rejects it from the start. Okay? But the next here believes and receives the word of the kingdom. But here's the problem. And this would convict me and it should convict you and tell you where you're at in the kingdom. Are you truly in the kingdom of God or are you a fake believer like so many of us were before the Lord showed us that and then compelled us to come out and do the will of God? This person could be you hearing the word of God and liking it and going to church and saying, I believe. But here's the problem. Jesus said that this here, as soon as tribulation and persecution comes for Jesus they become offended. So there's many churches that will not stand for the Lord Jesus in these last days and they won't rebuke things that are going to hell like fornication, gay marriage, um, all of these other things like drugs, sorcery that's so much in the churches, false teaching. And, and they just say, no, no, I, I'm not going to offend anybody. You know, that's not how the Lord does it. But the Lord is saying that to enter, it says to enter the kingdom of God, we must go through many tribulations and persecutions in Acts 17, I believe it is. So you can be a here that won't endure tribulation and persecution. Guess what? There's another here that makes it further in Matthew 13, 22. And this here makes it further. But the cares of the world. The deceitfulness of riches choke it out. So there's many people that are after money. There's many people. The Bible says that, that, the, that money pierces many people with many sorrows. So going after money. Many of these false teachers say that following Jesus, you will get rich. And you'll have your best life now. But Jesus was homeless. Jesus said that the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. That, that he is, was walking on the streets preaching. The disciples, when Paul died, he had nothing but a cloak and, and scriptures with him. The Old Testament scriptures. They weren't rich, my friends. They were rich in the grace of God. They were rich in the power of God. They had this transforming faith. And they were unwilling to deny his name even unto death, the Bible says in Acts, in Acts 5.32. Where, where they were trying to shut the disciples up. And they, and they spoke even more boldly and even louder. And that was the power of God manifested through their faith. They said that we can't deny what we have seen and heard. We will not deny it. And that's what a true believer is. He won't deny what the word says. And he will endure. He will endure sufferings. He will endure tribulations. Because it glorifies God. You know what Jesus said in Matthew 5? He said, when men speak evil of you because of my name, great is your reward in heaven. For so they spoke of the prophets before you. And so going through suffering is, is what we're called to do. We're called to suffer as Christ suffered. 
And so the fourth hearer hears the word of the kingdom and understands and has fruit 160 and 30 fold. So what happens to the, to the lukewarm believers? Well, we'll get to that in Revelation where Jesus spits out lukewarm believers. But there is coming a day in which God will judge this world in righteousness, it says in Acts, by that man whom he has ordained, Jesus Christ. And he has proven him by raising him from the dead. And that passage shows you that God has given you all the evidence you need and that there is no more evidence you need to receive. Jesus rose from the grave. Death could not hold the Lord Jesus. He made the blind see, he made the demons flee, he made the lame leap, and he came with his power to prove that he was the son of God. And those who heard and came in faith and believed were transformed and followed him even unto death because they counted this life as nothing compared to following Jesus. In the book of John, when Jesus rose from the grave and he told Peter that Peter was gonna be crucified for him, and Peter said, what about John? And he said, don't worry about the plans I have for John. And, and he said, follow me like it's no big deal. I have overcome the cross. And Peter received that word. He knew he was going to his death afterward. And we're going to preach his word to you today in the words of the Lord Jesus, who resurrected on the third day to fulfill all scripture. Praise the Lord. So Jesus wants to deliver you from one kingdom to another. In Acts uh, 26, verse 18 Paul, who used to murder Christians, he was a blasphemer. He said he did it in ignorance and he murdered Christians. And Jesus revealed himself to him on the road to Damascus and a blinding light hit him and he fell off his donkey and he, and the Lord, and the Lord spoke to him and he said, Lord, who art thou? And he says, I am Jesus Christ who, who thou art persecuting. And, and Paul became mighty for the Lord as a, as a witness that God will deliver you from wherever you're at. That's what it says. Is he's a pattern that, that God will deliver you, whether you're a, a former murderer, a former transgender person, a former homosexual, lesbian, former drug trafficker like I was, whatever you were, a former drunkard, a former fighter, a former military person, whatever you were, God can deliver you from one kingdom into another and in Acts 26, 18, when Paul is going to jail and he's being, he's being persecuted, he's being whipped, he's being stoned, he's going through many persecutions because the Lord, those who he has saved from the pit are going to suffer for him as proof that they are, that they have a faith of uh, out of this world, that we know that there is a God who raises us from the dead. We know that the Lord Jesus is powerful. We know that his word never returns void like it says in Isaiah 55. His word goes forth and it never returns void. And so Paul says when he's being tried in prison to, I think it was Governor Felix, he says that I was, I was told to open their eyes. So your eyes have to be open from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God through Jesus Christ for the remission of sins to those who will be sanctified unto an inheritance. And Jesus talks about uh, Christians that are in name only in Matthew 7. A lot of people say, judge not, lest ye be judged, and you shouldn't be out here street preaching, but that's the only Bible verse they know, and they're not seeing the other Bible verses that say that the spiritual man judges all things because we have the mind of Christ. Jesus said in uh, John 7, 24, I think it is, judge, don't judge by outward appearances, judge righteous judgment. So Jesus said, judge not, lest ye be judged with the same judgment you use, and it will be measured back to you. Hypocrites, first take the log out of your own eye, that you may help the brother take the speck out of his eye. And then he shows us that a person has to deal with the sin in their life so that he can help another person. So it's hypocritical judgment Jesus is coming against. And you see that explained next when Jesus says, don't throw what is precious out to dogs and swine. You have to have judgment to know if somebody's not receiving the pure word of God that's precious to you. If they don't receive it, you give it to them and you leave. And if they're, if, because if you don't, uh, if, if you argue with them, then it says you will both be rendered underneath their feet because they're dogs and swine. They have not the spirit of God. So if they don't receive the word of God, you move along. Just like Jesus sent out his disciples. He said, if they don't receive it, knock the dust off your feet as a witness against them. So Jesus actually taught righteous judgment. And then he goes on to say that um, beware of false prophets who come to you as sheep in wolves' clothes. 
they will, you will know them by their fruits. So do you see how Jesus is showing that the false come in as, as, as if they're good? They come in as sheep, but they're wolves. They're ravening wolves. They come in and act like they're godly. In, in 2 Corinthians 10 or 11, it says that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. And so do his ministers of Christ. They feign righteousness. They pretend righteousness. Their ends will be according to their deeds. So Jesus says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He says, make the tree good and its fruit good. Or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And you will know them by their fruits. And then Jesus said that narrow is the way in Matthew 7. And it's a difficult way. And few there be that find it. But broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many go there with and then Jesus says in Matthew 7 that many on that last day, this is a last day judgment where Jesus is prophesying of the last day's judgment in Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Many are going to say in that day, Lord, Lord, we prophesied, we cast out devils, we did many wonderful works. And Jesus says, these people were not doing the will of the Father. And he says, depart from me. I never knew you. You who practice sin, lawlessness. So they were still sinning. They were still living in rebellion against God. But they were claiming his name. And they were doing works in his name. But their, their end result was they were still practicing sin. And you know how we know this? Because right after that, it says, I will liken you a wise man. He is like a man who hears these words and does them. He is like a man who built his house upon the rock. And when the storm came and the winds blew and the waves crashed, it stayed because it was founded upon that rock. Jesus just said, if you obey his word, you will endure all the way to the end. And all the storms of this world and all the temptations of this world and everything that can come against you will fall away because you are founded upon Jesus Christ. And it says after that, Jesus says, the foolish man is one who hears these words we're preaching and does not do them. He is likened unto a man who's built his house upon the sand. And when the storm came and the winds blew and the waves crashed, great was its fall. Great was its fall. So do be a doer of the word, James says, not a hearer only, deceiving your own selves. So the word of God, it's going to abide in you and bear much fruit. What happens if you're Matthew 20, Matthew 13, 21, and you're a proclaiming believer, but you do not endure tribulation and persecution, and you have no fruit? John 15 explains it, and these are the verses that show you who is really understanding the Word of God. Not once saved, always saved. Jesus said in John 15 that the Father draws those to Christ, and that Christ is the vine, and we are the branches, and the Father purges all who are in Christ that we would bear more fruit. This purging is a refining by fire. It's the word of God. It's the conviction of the Holy Spirit to help us grow, to bear more fruit for his kingdom. My friends, if you're going to the bar, if surfing is bigger than Jesus and you're still cussing, if you're still living for this world and human popularity, you're not bearing fruit for God's kingdom. You're worldly and you have no fruit. Doesn't matter if you go to church. Doesn't matter if you've been baptized. Doesn't matter if you do the cross. It doesn't matter if you pray every night. If you have no fruit, here's what John 15 says, that every tree that bears no fruit withers and the Father takes it away. Where does he put it? He throws it in the fire. John the Baptist came preaching, uh, repent, and that Jesus is going coming with his winnowing fork and he is going to uh, chasten and cast out those who are not producing fruit into, into everlasting fire. It says, and that is what is going to happen on the last day, that you've got to abide in Jesus and you will bear fruit for his kingdom. And it's not anything in, in, great about you. It's faith in the Lord Jesus. It's love for God that he gave his son to bear everything on the cross for you, that you would see him when, when you go to church, you would see the Lord Jesus being marred beyond human recognition, that he was beaten in his face, that they covered his face, that he knew that he was coming to do this, that it was not his will. It was the Father's will. He said, not my will, but the Father's will be done. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was sweating blood for knowing that he was going to go to the cross and die a crucifixion death, which is a torturous death that took days sometimes to die. And, and they died of asphyxiation. And he had his back whipped so much that the skin came off of him and he was uh, put on a cross 
and he did that and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Praise the Lord. And that's what we are called to do, to forgive people. If they, if they come against us for preaching, we say, may the Lord have mercy on you. May the Lord deliver you from one kingdom into another. May you receive this word of truth. May you be born again of the spirit of God. Praise the Lord. And in John 15, where we see that the father purges and all those who do not bear fruit are like a branch that withers and gets cut off and thrown in the fire. We see that if we make it through the sanctification that all the believers go through, if we make it through that, Jesus says that his joy will be in us and that his joy will remain. It's not the joy of this world. We have an otherworldly joy. We have this hope that is set on God, that is set on Jesus resurrecting, that is set on the testimony he's given us from one kingdom to another, that he's, that he's purged us of our sins. He's purged us of our heart and made us in right standing with God. And, and we follow him now. That's where our joy is. Our joy is in his kingdom. And the world can't take this joy away. This joy comes every time I read the word of God, every time I listen to the good street preachers out there, every time I gather with the saints of God, I have this joy. It's unspeakable joy because I know that this is eternal, eternal matters that are going into his kingdom for eternity. Do you know it says in Daniel 12 that at the day of judgment, some are going to rise to everlasting shame and contempt. This should put the fear of God in you. There's an everlasting shame and contempt for those who are not following Jesus. And he says, but those who are wise will lead many to righteousness and they will shine like the stars. Praise the Lord. So the wise win souls, it says in Proverbs, snatching them out of the fire, it says in, in Jude. Telling people, compelling people to come out of one kingdom and into another kingdom. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so are, are we got this joy that the Holy Ghost gives us for following Jesus, for loving him and his word for coming out and doing the will of the Father. And he says we can ask the Father in Jesus' name. And it's the Father's good pleasure to answer. And so we pray for uh, fruit in his kingdom. Because that's the promise. That there will be people that come out of the dark kingdom of, of drug addiction. Of, of listening to worldly music. And they will come into the kingdom of Christ. Born again of the Spirit of God. A new creation in Christ. And that's what the Bible says. All who are in Christ. So you got to be in Christ. The proof that you're in Christ is you're a new creation. Your old life is dead to you now. You can't go back to the rock concerts, the, the concerts of the world, because they're speaking unholy things. In Isaiah 6, Isaiah was taken up to the, to the, to the uh, altar of God. And he saw Jesus high and lifted up and his robe and his glory. And the angel said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, high and lifted up. And, and Isaiah the prophet, he was undone. And that's like what it is to be born again. We're undone. Our, we knew that our sins were uh, uh, over the top of us. And the Lord revealed that to us. And he gave us a new heart and a new mind. And he gave us the spirit of Christ. And that's what every born again believer has a testimony of. That they've been transformed. That they've been renewed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for his word. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of God will remain forever. Says the Lord Jesus. In Matthew 24, 13. The Lord Jesus says. Whoever perseveres to the end shall be saved. Does that sound like once saved, always saved? From the Lord? No. Whoever perseveres, endures. You know what it says in 2 John 1. Hear the word of the Lord, church. 2 John 1 says, if anybody abide not in the doctrine of Christ, that they have not God in them. If you're not abiding in the doctrine of Christ, you don't have God in you. you got to abide in that doctrine that we're preaching to you today. If you are abiding in it, these words will remain in you and you will love the word preached. You will, you will like the edification. Praise the Lord. You know what, you know what Jesus said? You know what Jesus said about Pharisees? Jesus, Jesus said, Jesus said, the, Jesus said, the, this is preaching, preaching. A lot of people say that. You don't have the love of Christ in you. The leaven of the Pharisees is hypocrisy. My friend, the leaven of the Pharisees is hypocrisy. That's what Jesus said. That's the Bible right there you're ripping up. That's the Bible you're ripping up. No, you don't have the Spirit of God. Jesus said to go preach. Get out of the way, Jason. Jason, get out of the way. Just get out of the way. Friend. Jesus said to preach. 
That's praying. Jesus said to go preach. Mark, you, you're ripping up, you're ripping up the words of Jesus. Your word. Mark 16, 15. Go out and preach to all creatures. Hey friend, may God have mercy on you. We love you. May God have mercy on you. The leaven of the Pharisees is hypocrisy, said the Lord. You have no love in your heart if you're still cursing. May God bless you with repentance that leads to salvation. The Bible says, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. You're speaking F-bombs. You're, you're ripping up the, the tracks of Jesus. You're misquoting the Bible. Jesus said the leaven of the Pharisees is hypocrisy. But praise God, may he bless you. May he give you mercy. May he redeem you from one kingdom to another. I used to be violent. I've been in prison. I was a drug trafficker. I wish you would have just listened a little longer. And you could have been delivered from one kingdom to another by faith. By faith. You know, what that man said happens to many street preachers where people will say that we're praying in public. Am I praying? I'm preaching. Jesus said to go out and preach to all creatures in Mark 16, 15. In Luke 14, he says, I send you out to the highways and byways to compel people to come in. This is a command of Jesus. People misquote scripture. He said, the Pharisees prayed in public. I'm not praying, I'm preaching. Hoping that you'll hear the word. In Romans 10, in Romans 10, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they have a preacher unless one be sent? So that faith is going to come to you by hearing the word of God from a preacher who's sent to go give you the word. And then you're going to end up finding out where you're at in your walk with the Lord. Sadly, the man who's cussing and tearing up Bible tracts and misquoting scripture right now, he's an enemy of Christ. And so many people are. But you know what? God can use that man in, in a big way. God can use the man in a big way. That's who Jesus came for. He came for the sinner. He came to deliver people from their sins and transform them into this new walk and to, and to be a new creation. And then he'll know that if the spirit of God is in him, he won't cuss. He won't listen to worldly music. He'll listen to the word of God and abide in the words of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise our God. He is mighty to be saved. Matthew 13, the parables, that if you're born again, you're going to understand them. Jesus says that there are tares sown in with, with the true church. And these are children of the devil. And that at the end of the age, Jesus will send out his holy angels to reap out of his kingdom all who offend and practice sin. So by their fruits you will know them. I used to cuss so much. I used to be a slave of getting high. I used to fight. I used to do all these things as a fake believer, growing up as a runaway kid. But I knew I wasn't doing the will of God. And when I heard these words preached, I knew I wasn't in right standing with God. And that's what a, a fake believer needs to receive is the truth. If you're not walking with Christ, you're a fake believer, just like I was in the past, just like many of us were. In 1 John, it says this, this is the message we have heard and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness. If we say if we, say we walk with him and, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us of all sin, and we have fellowship one with another. That's so easy to understand right there. If you're in Christ, you're walking in the light. If you're saying you're with Christ, but you're walking in the darkness, it says you're lying and doing not the truth. So Jesus would never tell you to go to a bar. Jesus would never tell you to commit fornication where kids are being killed at Planned Parenthood from the drunkards going to bars, looking at women dressed scantily, and then trying to have sex with them, and then the woman going to an abortion clinic and killing the baby. The Bible says that that is a blood sacrifice to demons and that it gives the power of, of, it gives the power to, of the land over to demons if you understand the word of God from the Old Testament where when there was much wickedness, 
and they did blood sacrifices of babies to demons. The, the land was given over to corrupt and evil judges. And then God would raise up street preacher prophets to come out on the streets. And in Isaiah it says to uh, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their sins. And so the Bible is full of street preachers. It's people that don't read the Bible and aren't born again. That don't understand that it's all street preachers. The whole Bible is full of them. In the Old Testament where the false church needed to be rebuked by, by prophets. Where do, you, where do you think Jeremiah was? He was on the streets in Jeremiah 6 and 7. Right in front of the fake church. Telling them that you've listened to deceptive words and lying words. And that you're, you're blind. And that you, that you need to repent. And so the, the, the Bible is full of street preaching. And that is a command of Jesus to go out and preach. We're not praying out here, my friends. We're preaching the word that will never return void. To edify the body of Christ and to endure tribulations and persecutions. If the man would just listen, he would hear. 1 Corinthians says, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to we who are being saved is the power of God. In 2 Corinthians, he says the same thing, but like this. That the preaching is to those who are saved from glory to glory. From life to everlasting life. It's, it's, we're being transformed by this word. It's renewing us in our heart and in our, in our inner man. It's showing us the way. Jesus said he is the light that has come into the world. But men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. And they didn't want to bring their deeds to the light. Lest they be reproved or exposed. But we who are in Christ do our deeds. That they may be seen of men that they're wrought of God. We're not going to bars and drinking and then coming out here telling you uh, the word of God. We're, we've been translated out of that kingdom to come out here and tell you what the Bible says. To be not deceived. 1 Corinthians 6, Paul preaching to the church of Corinth. After he'd already said in 1 Corinthians 5 to expel the wicked offender from among you. This, this person was in there fornicating with another man's wife. And Paul said, expel him from among you. And the reason for that is because if sin enters the church and it's not dealt with uh, righteously, that it will infect the whole church. You know, we have churches today where people go there to, to find a, uh, somebody to have sex with. I was in some of these churches. I've seen it. I've seen some of these churches okay with pills that get you high, okay with, with the ways of this world, okay with fornication. Hiring people. We see so many pastors in adultery. We see the Baptist church uh, involved in a sex sting by the FBI where four or five hundred pastors involved in child pornography. And the Bible says that they will not inherit the kingdom of God. These are false shepherds. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians 6. Paul preaching to the church. Be not deceived. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither fornicator, idolater, neither drunkard, neither sodomite, neither homosexual, neither extortioner, reviler. None of these things inherit. To God bless you, Brother Scott. Praise God for you and, and your wife. So you, it says this, but such were some of you. So any of these other sins, including drug use, including stealing and lying, uh, drunkenness, fornication, homosexuality, all of these things... There's hope for you because here is what Paul says to this church. But such were some of you. You were that. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified by the spirit of our God. So that was you. But now you are justified by faith. You are sanctified by the spirit of God. You're walking in holiness. The Bible says without holiness, no man will see God. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be fed. Blessed are those with a pure heart, for they shall see God. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 5 says, Let no one deceive you with empty and vain words. The wrath of God abides on those, on those who are still in fornication, who are still in these uh, sins. It says the wrath of God is coming upon the children of disobedience. The same book that people misuse, Ephesians 2, says that if be not deceived... Be not deceived by any vain words. The wrath of God abides on the children of disobedience. You're now a child of righteousness. You're now a slave of righteousness, says uh, Paul in Romans chapter 6. Shall we go on in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Christ is not the minister of sin. 
He is the minister of righteousness. How can we who are no longer in this world live any longer in, in the sins of this world? I've crucified. I'm crucified daily with Christ. No longer I that live, but Christ in me. The hope of glory. Praise the Lord. And so Jesus gave more parables, my friends. And these are the things you need to hunger for. You need to see what the mysteries of the kingdom of God are all about. That is given to you if you're born again to see. And once you see, you, you're going to have this zealousness for the Lord. That you would be, go out and make sure people hear the real word of God. Because it says faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So your, the faith is going to be quickened if you're a professed believer. But you haven't heard these words where Jesus warned. Many are going to say in that day. And it's a day of judgment that they're going to hear. Depart from me. I never knew you, you that work sin. It's not this just invite Jesus into your heart stuff that you hear. Jesus never said that. In fact, Jesus said in Luke 14, count the cost to be my disciple. First, count the cost to be my disciple. And he talks about building a house and not going the full distance. And he talks about um, uh, sending out a military delegation. And if he hasn't done the cost of it and he only makes it halfway. So he's warning not to go halfway He's telling you count the cost all the way to the end. And he says in Luke 14, the same one that's talking about count the cost, where he also says, send them out to the highways and byways. You know why he said that? Because the church was fake. If you read that scripture, they weren't following him for the right reasons. They, they weren't willing to give up the, the world. In one passage, it says in Luke 14 that they were followers. They were believers. But one said, let me go back to my wife and deal with her first. Another one said, let me go back to my five oxen which is a picture of your job. Another one said, let me go deal with my property. Three things that can get in the way. And he said they weren't worthy of the kingdom of God. This is a picture, my friends, of what it is to be a true believer, a true disciple. You've counted the cost. You've seen that what, what is in this world is nothing to you, but what is eternal is everything to you. The souls are what's eternal. Where you're going to go when you die is eternal, my friends. If you're, if you're, Jesus said, uh, do not sow into the things of this world that, were, that moth and rust will corrupt. Sow into the things that are everlasting life, which is his word that abides forever. Praise God. So the more parables in Matthew 24, he talks about uh, a person, two servants. One grows an evil heart and he beats the other servants and he's out with the drunken. A picture of being out with the world. And when Jesus returns, he cuts them off and appoints them with the hypocrites where this weeping and gnashing of teeth showing you two servants, but one grew an evil heart and beat the true servants of Christ with many stripes while they were out with the drunken. Praise the Lord. Praise God. He is Lord. Another parable Jesus gave. He gave the word and two sons. One of them, he heard the word and he did not do it. And the other one said, I will do it. And he didn't do it. And the one that, so there's two servants. One heard and said, I'll do it, but didn't. And then the other servant heard and said, I don't want to do it, but later did. Which one was justified, Jesus says. The one, and they said, the one who did it. So Jesus is showing you that it's a, it's a full, it's a full, you know how Paul said it? That I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So we're out here telling you to finish the race in faith. That whether you've started off bad or whether you've started off good, you must end the race well, says the Bible. You must end well. Praise the Lord. In Matthew 25, Jesus gave us a parable of ten virgins. All of them were looking for the Lord. But five of them were called foolish and had no oil when the Lord returned. And all ten of them fell asleep. And when the master returned, the wise had the oil in their lamps and they went to meet Jesus Christ upon his return. And he let them in. And the foolish ones had no oil, so they went and bought elsewhere. And they came back and they knocked on the door and they said, Lord, let us in. And Jesus said, I know you not. This is again a warning to the church, my friends. To have oil in your lamps. Be ready for the Lord Jesus upon his return. Be focused on the Lord's kingdom. Jesus said it's going to be like the days of Lot, which is like unto Sodom and Gomorrah, and unto the days of Noah, when the Son of Man is going to come. They were eating and they were drinking and they were giving of marriage. And he says it's going to be the same way that he comes back as a thief in the night. And if the master would have known the time, he would have come. And so he's showing you that you've got to be about the Father's business. 
in your life and put him first and you will be ready. You will be ready. If he's not your first love and other things are getting in the way, you're not going to be ready for his return is what he's saying right there. So be ready. He says be, be armed. Be, have readiness. Be, be uh, equipped and outfitted for, for war basically. In Luke 21 he says pray that you're found worthy to escape all that's coming in the last days. Jesus said in Matthew 18, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. For it'd be better for you to enter life blind than go into hellfire. He said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your foot, cut it off. Deal with your sin. And Jesus said, you want to be great in the kingdom of God? Lift up the little ones. He says, verily, verily, unless you're converted like a little child, you will nowhere enter the kingdom of God. And he says, woe to those who cause the little ones leaning toward him to sin that you will have a millstone tied around your neck thrown into the depths of the sea woe to the world because of offenses for they must come but woe unto him who causes the offenses and that means sin it leads people into sin in Jude in these last days we see the scriptures prophetically coming to pass in Jude it says Certain men have crept in unaware, taking the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and turning it into lasciviousness. Their condemnation awaits them, meaning they're going, to, they're going into hell. And he says, contend for the faith. Contend for the faith of God. Second Peter 2 is similar. Just as there were false prophets among you, so will there be false teachers bringing in destructive heresies, denying even the Lord that bought them. There's, there's destruction is going to come swiftly, it says. False teachers. It says they make merchandise out of God's people. Using, fa using feigned words, making merchandise out of God's people. They promise you liberty, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. With their eyes, they can't cease from sin, it says. Second Peter 2 prophesying about the last days telling us in 2 Peter 2 that God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down into outer darkness, reserved unto that day of judgment in chains. And God saved Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and only eight were saved when he flooded the ungodly world. And that God judged Sodom and Gomorrah as an example to those who would live ungodly. So the false church that says God never talked about homosexuality, 2 Peter 2 talks about that. That God made an example of that. First, uh, Romans 1 says a graphic description of men doing things with men that are vile. And women exchanging the natural use of the man for women. Things that are unnatural. And God gave them over to a debased mind. So this is the word that's preached. That, that you would remember it and abide in it. And that you would obey it. Another parable from Jesus. He said, bring those people to me who would not let me rule over them and cut them to pieces. Jesus has to rule over you for you to be his and him to know you. Praise God. That you would endure for the, for the tribulation of the saints. Praise the Lord. And 2 Peter 2 says that some forsake the right way. Not once saved, always saved when you see the scriptures. Some forsake the right way, meaning they were on it. And they went the way of Balaam, the man is the prophet. If you have eyes to see in these last days, you can see so many mega churches turning. Not all of them, but a lot of them are turning away and joining with the world for views. They're going the way of Balaam, the man is the prophet. And then it says in 2 Peter 2 that you must escape those. Escape those who are still in corruption. You must escape the false teachers. You must escape the churches that are in corruption. And he says, for it'd be better for you not to know the way of righteousness, which is Jesus, than after you have known it. Like the true proverb, a dog goes back to his vomit and a pig goes back to the mud. Better for you not to even know the way of truth of the Lord Jesus than after it says for you to go back to the world and to be therein entangled in therein and overcome. So it'd be like somebody who's a born-again believer going back to the drugs, going back to the fornication. If that 
doesn't, if that overcomes you, better for you not to know the right way. If you fall and you've gone and you're, you're a known backslider, like I have been a backslider in my past, where I knew the truth, but I went back to the world, I couldn't live like that. I couldn't live like that. I could, I could not live in fornication. I couldn't. It grieved me too much. My, the spirit in me, it says the body is for the Lord, not for fornication. And it says the spirit yearns jealously for us. And if you have the spirit of God in you and you're in sin and you're not convicted over it, and you're in the world, and the, and the world overtakes you, but you were once born again, it'd be better for you not to know the way of truth. Not only not once saved, always saved, but worse for you to forsake the right way, says the word of God. That's what the word says. Praise the Lord. Paul warned about the last days. God bless you guys. Paul warned about the last days in 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Holy Spirit expressly states. So the Holy Spirit through Paul is stating some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having their conscience seared as with a hot iron, speaking lies and hypocrisy. If it's once saved, always saved, how does some depart from the faith? It's not once saved, always saved. Whoever endures to the end shall be saved. Whoever endures tribulation and, and, and grows in the faith of God, who forsakes his life, will be saved. Those who try to save their life will lose it, says the Lord. Romans 11, another verse that says it's not once saved, always saved. It says you can be cut off as they were grafted in. Do not grow haughty, knowing the goodness of the Lord. If you grow haughty, you will be cut off, it says Romans 11. 18 through 22. Second Timothy chapter 3 talks about the perilous times in the last days are going to come where men are going to be lovers of their own selves. Proud, boasters, arrogant, despisers of those who are good, truce breakers, disobedient to parents, sensual, but not having the spirit of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power they're in. Just like Janus and Jambres, who in the Old Testament were sorcerers and magicians. Their deeds will be made manifest, it says, in the last days. You will know them by their fruits. You will see it. Praise the Lord. Evil imposters, it says, will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And then he says that, but the word of God is, is he says that all scripture is God-breathed. It's good for us in training in righteousness that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished and complete and perfect. The word of God will make you perfect. Praise the Lord. Second Timothy chapter four, when Paul was going to his death, his martyrdom, after he had fought the good fight and finished the course, he says, there is a crown laid up for me and for all those who love the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, who's going to come back and judge the quick and the dead. And he says, preach the word, the instant in season and out of season, because the word is good for reproof, rebuke, and edifying men. That's what the word of God is for, he told Timothy, but you preach the word. And he says, Demas forsook me for love of the present world. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Revelation is the re returning of Jesus, where we see how Jesus is resurrected. Praise God. Amen. And so Jesus reveals himself to the only apostle who hasn't been killed, who was prophesied that he had something else for John. John was thrown into a vat of oil by the governor of Rome, and he would not die. And they put him on the island of Patmos, and Jesus revealed himself to him on the Lord's day. And Paul, and, and I'm sorry, John saw him, and he fell down as if dead under this vision of Jesus Christ's resurrection. And Jesus had eyes as a flame of fire. His hair was white as wool. His feet was burnished bronze. His voice of many waters and a double-edged sword in his mouth, which is the word of God. And, he, and John fell down dead under this, under this vision of Jesus. And Jesus touched him and he says, Fear not. Behold, I was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and hell. And he says, Write down the things that you see. The things that are, the things you see, and the things that shall be. And give them to the churches, which are in Asia, the seven churches, which pertain to the full body of Christ. And Jesus gave judgments upon all seven churches and exhortations. And, the, and Jesus said, I know your works, that you have labored for my namesake, 
you've kept the patience, you, you can't bear those who are evil. You've tested those who claim they're apostles and found them to be liars to the first church of Ephesus. All good things, but this I have against you, that you forgot your first love. Remember where thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. Or else I will move thy candlestick, says the Lord. So the first church was street preachers out of Ephesus, out there testing those who claim they're apostles, proving them by their words that they were liars. Good job, says Jesus. But they even had to repent, my friends. Does that sound like once saved, always saved? Does that sound like pre-tribulation escape rapture? No. Jesus said to him who overcomes to this church, who had to overcome, you will eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise, my God. And he has seven churches. The next church of Smyrna, he says this church thinks they're poor because they were persecuted. And he says, no, you're actually rich. And he says, the devil's going to cast some of you into prison. Be faithful unto death. To those who overcome will not taste the second death. This church has to overcome to death from the Lord Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. The next church of Pergamos, Jesus says the seed of Satan is in it. And that doctrine of Balaam, 2 Peter and Jude talk about. It's a huge warning for the last days. The doctrine of Balaam. Where the church gives in to the fame and the fortune of the world. Like the Old Testament shows us in Numbers 22. And they, 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 they want the world and they claim Christ. And they join with doctrines that make people sin. And Jesus says to this church that had the seed of Satan and the doctrine of Balaam. But my faithful martyr Antipas. He was faithful all the way to martyrdom. And so he's pointing to those who are witnesses, who are faithful, faithful. And Jesus is called faithful and true. Jesus is called the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come, the Almighty. Praise the Lord. And so this church, he, he says, if you overcome these doctrines that are bad, he will write on you a new name that only you guys know yourselves in him. It's your intimacy with God for fulfilling the call in your life. That is your eternal reward that he's saying. Praise the Lord. The fourth church had so many works. They had the most works listed out of seven. And it also looks like one of the most wicked churches. This shows me that God is reaching out to every form of church false. The closer to true, the ones that are very false, he's still reaching out for people to come out of those churches into the truth. And this church, he says... That they have this doctrine, this Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. And she teaches kids and leads kids into sexual sin. And Jesus says, I gave her space to repent, but she repented not of her fornication. And to as many as have not this doctrine. So he says, don't have this doctrine. He will put on you no other burden. But to those who have this doctrine, who commit adultery, spiritual and physical adultery. In the Bible it talks about spiritual adultery is not abiding in Christ. The Old Testament was they worshipped other gods. They forsook the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They forsook obeying his ways. And, and God judges them for it. Same thing in the New Testament. But we have even more. It says in Hebrews we have even more than they had in the Old Testament. We have this cloud of witnesses in Hebrews chapter 12. That we must lay aside all the weights of sin that so easily beset us. And in Hebrews 12 it talks about enduring the chastening of the Lord. It goes with John 15. That, uh, the, that God chastens those he loves. He says if you endure chastening as all sons and daughters. All children of God must endure. Then you are sons indeed. But if you despise the chastening of the Lord. Then you are bastards showing that you're not receiving correction. And you're no longer children of God. Because you despised the correction of the Lord. Hebrews 12. Praise the Lord. And so Thyatira with the Jezebel, last days Jezebel. You know how we know that? Because he said she repented not. And all that commit adultery with her, her drug use, her false prophesying, her sexual immorality, her joining with this beast system, joining with false prophets of this, of this nar, of this world, that call themselves prophets and falsely prophesy about Trump and so many other things. And tell you to take this sorcery shot as if it's of God when it's made with aborted fetal tissues in it. 
And you should be able to see this true church of God, that the people that are partnering with that are not with the doctrine of Christ. They're committing spiritual adultery and whoredoms, the Bible says. And you know what Jesus says? As all those that have that doctrine, they are going into great tribulation. That shows you it's the last day's doctrine, showing you that they're going into great tribulation. And that Jesus will throw her children into a sickbed and kill her children so that all the churches will know that Jesus is searching the thoughts and hearts. Just like Hebrews 4.12 says, it's a proof of judgment upon them. Praise the Lord. And Jesus says, to those who overcome this fourth church, they will rule over the nations as Christ overcame and broke everything to shivers. And I will give them the morning star. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. These are the deeper things at the end of the Bible where Jesus says that that's a blessed, blessed are those who read the prophecy of this book I'm giving you in Revelation and those who hear it and keep the things that are written therein. It's a blessing for you. You're going to know the judgments of God. You're going to know what it's, what it's like to follow Jesus. In Revelation chapter 3, the fifth church, he says this church thinks they're alive, but they're dead. Only a few are walking in white. Strengthen the things that remain. I have not found your works perfect before my God. The Greek word means complete. But how many churches are telling you your works are supposed to be perfecting your faith? And that's what it says in James. That's what it's saying right here. Only a few in this church walking in white. They had a look to the world that they were alive. But Jesus said There's, they're dead. Only a few are walking in white. And Jesus says to those who overcome, I will not blot out their name out of the book of life, but I will speak to the Father about you. You know what Jesus said in the Gospels? Whoever denies me before men, I will deny before God. Whoever speaks of me to men, I will speak to the Father of. It's a form, it's evangelism. They had to get back to the basics of evangelizing. And then, that, then God gave them the power to walk in white, in white. Revelation chapter 3, Philadelphia Church. Jesus is described as he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key that opens and, and opens doors that no man can shut and shuts doors that no man can open. Jesus has the keys of death and hell, it says in Revelation. That's the door that we walk through. And Jesus says to this church, I know your works that you've labored, you've kept the patience, you've not denied my name, and you have a little strength. Behold, I will cast those who say they're Jews but of the synagogue of Satan before your feet so that they will know that I have loved thee. It's showing you the judgment where there's a judgment coming where the true children of God are separated from the worldly Christians. It says the house of the Lord is judged first in 1 Peter 4. And if scarcely a believer be saved, where will the ungodly and sinner appear? And so there's a judgment coming. And this church, he says, I will keep you from the hour that's going to come try the whole world. And I will make you a pillar in New Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven if you overcome. Every church is told to overcome. They're told what they're doing right and how they have to overcome to endure to the end. And they're told what they're doing wrong and what they have to separate from. The last church of Revelation chapter 3, Laodicea. This church, Jesus says, I wish you were hot or cold. But because you're lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. In this church, they, they, they played church. They said, no, 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 I am rich. I have need of nothing, and I have plenty of goods. And Jesus said that that's how they acted. But they were poor, blind, naked, wretched, and miserable. And Jesus says to this church, I counsel thee to buy from Jesus gold tried in the fire, that you may be clothed in white, that the shame of your nakedness be not exposed, that you may have eye salve to see Behold, I chasten those I love, says the Lord. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. To those who overcome, you will get to sit on the throne of Jesus as Jesus overcame and sat on his Father's throne. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Revelation chapter 12 talks about the saints overcoming Satan and this beast system by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony loving not their own lives, even unto the death. Revelation 14, 11 says, Blessed are those who die from henceforth, for their works do follow. 
Your works are going to follow, my friends, either to everlasting life. Like the scripture says, the righteous will shine forth as the sons of God. Hearing in Matthew 25, well done, my faithful servant. Enter the rest prepared for you before the foundation of the world. When the sheep are lined up, the sons of God and the goats are lined up. And God cast the goats into hell, it says, where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. Second Thessalonians 1 says that Christ is returning in flaming fire with the holy angels to judge those who know not God nor obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. So obey the gospel. Believe with all your heart. The fruit of the Spirit is peace, love, joy, righteousness, self-control. This is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is what? Righteousness. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. The Lord may be ask you about that again. <laughs> that is what we want for you. To have that peace with God. Be reconciled unto God. Be a child of the Most High. Be a follower of Jesus. Lay aside this world. 1 Peter 4 says, As Christ suffered for us, so we must arm ourselves with the same mind. He who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sinning. We no longer sin like we used to, it says. We used to do the things of the world. It even lists off the things we see today. The banquetings, the revilings, the orgies, the drunkenness, the carousing. We once did that, it says, but now we suffer for Christ. And our reward is in heaven that the moth and rust cannot corrupt. Praise God. God bless you, San Clemente. Bless all the hearers. Pray for the guy that tore up the track. We pray God would use him in the last days. God would deliver him from, from, the, from the demons that are rage, the rage of demons. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody else want to preach? Yeah. Yeah, there's something else. All right.